Good day, everybody. Um, my name is Bryce Curry. I'm a PhD candidate at Montana State University here in the US. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about two vegetative changes and how they sort of interact um, in the northern Great Plains of North America. So I'm not going to dwell too much on the background, but we're all well aware that the climate is changing and it has been changing and is driving a large vegetative changes um, across the globe. Um, and one of these vegetative changes that is of interest to me is this idea of greening or um, just uh, increasing photosynthetic capacity as the earth gets more uh, carbon dioxide in it, gets warmer and precipitation patterns change. Um, this idea of global greening. Uh, and the second sort of vegetative change that's um, prevalent across the globe is this phenomenon called woody plant expansion or woody plant encroachment, um, which is just really defined as um, trees moving into a grassland. Um, and again, uh, we see it uh, very prevalently across the tundra uh, regions, also in temperate regions, and then uh, particularly in savanna. Uh, temp uh, tropical savanna regions. So as we think about, you know, greening being satellite-based measurement of productivity, um, and then we think of woody plant expansion simultaneously occurring in, you know, grasslands uh, across the globe, uh, it sort of raises the question, um, to what degree is the woody plant expansion phenomenon driving this greening, observed greening trend. And it's important to sort of tease these apart because they both have unique uh, functional uh, consequences um, and feedbacks um, with the ecosystems that they're occurring in. And so teasing apart, you know, is it more greening or is it more woody plant expansion or is woody plant expansion even just driving greening um, is a useful um, place to start. And so we're going to do this in the Northern Great Plains. We're going to study this in the Northern Great Plains, which is um, my neighbor to the east of me, as you can see here in Montana. Um, in the center here, the Northern Great Plains uh, spans, for those unfamiliar, spans two Canadian provinces, portions of two Canadian provinces, and portions of five U.S. states. It is a massive area of land, about 740 square kilometers. 740,000 square kilometers, excuse me, and um, spans many latitude long, and degrees longitude, which provides us with uh, many gradients uh, to study um, vegetative changes um, under. And it's particularly useful to use the Northern Great Plains to study temperate grassland because most of it is sort of intact temperate grassland uh, that, being, that has never been plowed up. A lot of it. And so about 60, 65% of the Northern Great Plains is still um, pretty, you know, relatively intact grassland, as intact as uh, possible, and given the 21st century, what we've done to it. Uh, and so because of its intact nature, it's become a really hot spot for conservation. Um, yet, what no one's really talking about is this sort of these massive vegetative changes, at least not until recently. So recently we looked at um, one greening metric and the sort of the biogeochemical precursors to that and find that CO2 and climate change, it's getting wetter in the Northern Great Plains, um, is largely driving at least this um, greening trend. Um, although we didn't isolate grasslands particularly in this study. Um, as for woody plant expansion, however, uh, if we look to our neighboring drylands and other grasslands on the margins of the NGP, we see large amounts of woody plant expansion. However, we've never really been able to, uh, or no one's ever really studied the Northern Great Plains in terms of this vegetative change. And so our first question is really just that, what is the magnitude of change for the, both the greening and woody plant expansion? And then we look at um, a host of different driving variables uh, of those two vegetative changes. And then next we sort of think about is woody plant expansion one of the drivers of greening? 
Um, and then finally, future vegetation um, projections are sort of, you know, all over the place. And uh, we looked at our current rates of change to sort of benchmark those changes. So to do such, um, we used three different uh, greening metrics. Oops. Um, most studies use, we chose these three because most studies use one of them. We decided that thinking about the functional differences between an encroaching or advancing tree, evergreen conifer tree species, um, it might be useful to look at different sort of metrics. So we use peak normalized difference vegetative index or NDVI, mean NDVI, and then leaf area index. Um, and then more, most novel is we normalize them between zero and one, one being the highest value, zero being none, and sum them all up. So the maximum possible value would be a three, where you have a really high amount of all three greening at the same time, um, or you know anything less than that would indicate that there's some degree of one or all of them. Um, we then looked at percent tree cover change for our proxy of woody plant expansion. And I should mention that these are all modus derived variables. We used a study period of about 20 years, uh, or exactly 20 years from 20, 2000 to 2019. And then to determine whether or not changes were significant across that time, we used a man Kendall trend test and an alpha value of 0 0.05. And then to look at the drivers of each vegetative change, we put 26 different climate, topographic, or disturbance variables into a random forest analysis and looked at the variable importance. So getting into the results, unsurprisingly, because it's been documented elsewhere, we see large amounts of greening. Um, but we see large amounts of greening for every single greening metric, the most being leaf area index and the least being mean NDVI change. But still, nonetheless, they're all increasing. Same for woody plant expansion or percent tree cover change. Um, it's useful to look at baseline tree cover for the year 2000 to see what we're changing from. Um, and what we can see is median tree cover is low. It's about 1.6%. So it's almost not detectable practically um, in many of the pixels, grassland pixels. Um, however, we see that large portions of the grasslands are increasing in tree cover significantly. So over that 20 years, there's a trend. And where we see the largest changes is where we actually had the least tree cover um, to begin with. So for instance, a 1% uh, tree cover pixel that moves to then a 2% tree cover pixel in 20 years has increased by 100%. So the smallest proportion or the smallest tree cover percentage led to the largest proportion of changes. And to figure out what's driving them, now we look at our random forest um, outputs. And so I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but the um, takeaways right here are the or what you need to know to understand these plots are the highest variables are the most important. And the, whether they're on the left side or the right side of the zero line indicates whether or not they're positively associated or negatively associated. And so just to sort of um, make it easy for us, um, both, all of the variables, peak NDVI, mean NDVI, and LAI change or increase um, were pretty much driven by very similar things. Out of those 26 variables, we see you know about five or six that pop out at the top of the list almost every time. That would be the absence of fire, uh, topo uh, smooth topo topography, so low slopes, and smooth terrain, and then uh, high precipitation variability, so precipitation uh, coefficient of variation, and increasing precipitation are all driving um, all three greening. However, if we look at the correlation between the drivers, so this is how correlated that list of drivers is for each, we see that. Um, LAI and peak NDVI aren't very highly correlated. So this indicates that those two are being driven by differing um, uh, drivers, indicating that they are sort of, they're providing different information, um, which just goes to show that using just one of these uh, greening metrics might not give us the same result as using all three of them. Um, looking at then tree cover change in the same fashion, we see the same sort of five or six pop out, which is the absence of fire, precipitation variability, smooth topography, and increasing precipitation are what's driving tree cover. 
uh, increase and thus um, those are highly correlated with the greening uh, variables on average. So unsurprisingly, they are um, sort of being driven by similar changes. These two vegetative changes are being driven by similar drivers. So then if we look at the extent that they're being driven um, similarly by, or where they co-occur, um, we see a large amount of co-occurrence. Uh, co um, anywhere in purple on this map here is where woody plant expansion um, and greening is occurring simultaneously. Um, we do get large areas of independent woody plant expansion and large areas of independent greening, um, but the by far the largest proportion of area of grasslands are undergoing both vegetative changes. Uh, obviously, we can't get at causality with just that, but what we can do is plot greening and woody plant expansion uh, together, and we see this really strong, powerful uh, relationship with the highest proportional woody plant expansion uh, being associated with the largest greening or the most greening um, in terms of the greening index. So it's strong evidence that woody plant expansion is a big part of greening, this, the greening phenomenon, and indeed 17% of greening variability is explained by woody plant expansion. So um, a good amount of evidence for synchrony between the two vegetative changes. And then we think about the future. Um, we see that uh, there's large, large, lots of studies that try to predict the future um, for both productivity and uh, a few studies looking at vegetation in the future. And so our rates uh, validify the pace um, or the proportion of increase in the future, uh, which is about 20 to 100% increase by 2100. Um, and our current rates validify that. Or for woody plant expansion, we'd need to increase the rate of woody plant expansion by about 5x to get to that cool open woody forest um, of again, the entire conversion of the prairie to that. So just wrapping up, uh, woody plant expansion is an important component of the recent greening trend. Um, and vegetative changes are both largely driven by the absence of fire and increasing precipitation. And there's some strong topographic controls and then finally, greening rates are on pace to mac, match projected rates. Uh, however, woody plant expansion rates are quite low. So I'm going to skip a couple slides for time. Um, and with that, I want to thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, you can email me or tweet at me or visit my website. Um, and yeah, thanks.